Okay, I, hello, I'm Barry. This is Trent, my buddy. And we do an impression of World War II Airborne. And they're called paratroopers, they're properly called. And I'm doing 82nd Airborne. He's doing a generic late war impression, which could be any one of the three uh, divisions that took part in the North. Uh, North European campaign. Uh, basically what this is is a, what they call the 42 uniform and this is the 43 uniform. This was worn in North Africa, Sicily, Italy, and Normandy. This was worn in the later part of the war, late 44, going from the most common name for the event was the Bridge Too Far in uh, Denmark, right? Yeah. Yeah. That took place in Denmark. And then again when they went over the Rhine. Um, <clears throat> though this uniform did stay in use all the way to the end of the war by some of the troops. The boots we're wearing are called jump boots. Uh, they were pretty much an elite type thing for the airborne and uh, later they were replaced with a uh, what they call the buckle boots. Um, if you'll notice that basically the color difference, this is what they call the OD number three which is badly faded out and this is uh, OD number seven and uh, that happened because as war progressed going north, things became much darker green. Uh, so it blended in better, it was better camouflage. Earlier in the war, the colors were generally lighter because of the tropical type of environment. <laughs> uh, there was no such thing as khaki by the American Army standards. Uh, but everybody did call it either uh, suntans or khakis when it got to this shade, even though that's not correct. The only uniform that was accurately, or accurately called khaki was the summer uniform, um, but that was rarely worn in, nor in the northern European campaign. Uh, sometimes in Italy it could be found or in Sicily, but not very often. Uh, one of the things that we both have in common is we're both wearing what are our ammo pouches and belts. He's using a cartridge belt designed for an M1 Grand. The wire cutters, 45, mag pouches, canteen, the, sort of just a basic rig. Now, he's got a wire cutter, and if you'll notice, I do too. And the reason, because of our rank, we can kind of pick what kind of tool, uh, pioneer tool that we would like to carry. Generally, most of the troops would carry what was called an entrenching tool or a pickaxe or a small hand nutting uh, or an axe or some other type of utility tool that can be used in uh, helping dig box holes or uh, you know general things like you know, cat holes for your know, training things like that um, as far as uh, what he's wearing is a Colt 45 type semi-automatic pistol. I have one here. He has his in the shoulder holster. Basically, these were personal choice items. Uh, officers were usually generally issued one of these. And they have a choice of what type of long arm they chose. Uh, being a sergeant, I've chose an M1 carbine with a folding stock. This is M1A1 um, with spare magazines. Um, I'm not as heavily armed as a lot of the sergeants were because I'm a specialist. I specialize in uh, supply, so I kind of chose mine to kind of go along with the needs that I'll have. I'm not really trying to get into the foxholes as such. I'm pretty much the guy that pushes the beans and bullets forward. Cool. He would be more in line to carry the M1 Grand or uh, perhaps uh, something like the VAR or something else. But of course, he'd have different weapons, uh, magazine pouches. Anything? Unnecessary. No, I just note the helmet screw and I've got one there.
luminous discs on the back, so they uh, glow in the dark so you can see your buddies and not shoot them in the back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, earlier in the war, that became a bit of a problem with communications and uh, recognition. Uh, guys would, you know, when you behind lines and you can't identify some very, someone very well, you're likely to shoot at them. And, of course, that's later in the war, they began to wear these devices he was talking about, and often they would have colorful panels that they would wear, scarves and things like that, to help aircraft identify them so that the aircraft wouldn't shoot them. Man. Yeah. And that's pretty much it, though. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank that was you. really great.